Hey everyone, today is Sunday, January 31st, the last day of January, and uh, I'm over here at the Farmer's Market in Bixby Knolls at Longfellow Junior High? No, <laughs> Longfellow Elementary. And uh, I'm over here at the tables eating some pozole that I got. And I, this is the second time I've been here. Uh, just wanted to get out of the house early and it's all good. Mm. I'm at my sister's house now. My mother spent the night over here and they don't know I'm showing up. So let's go give them a surprise. No. Mira qué flaco este también. No, I'm not. Ya no tiene panza. Sí, ya no tiene panza. Wow, ya sin For those for those of you who don't speak Spanish, they're saying that I'm losing weight. They must be losing their sight. No, you don't have a panza. You don't have a panza no more. You're gonna be on the computer on YouTube, so. So, uh, all our relatives will say hi in Mexico. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> I'll show oh you later. God. At least you comb your hair, pero mira yo. Let me go find the Gia. Hi guys. <laughs> hi guys. 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 Hi
uh, where you can get to the lagoon on one side and there's the harbor on the other side. You, there's no facilities there other than like you know a few bathrooms. There's a stage and I think one little one little store. But the, for the most part, if you go over there, you end up sleeping in tents. So they had some triathlete type of thing, triathlon. And when it was over, they had the band perform. And uh, it was a Saturday night, and we were to perform and be finished by 11 p.m. And 11 p.m. rolled about, and all of these uh, triathletes who are, you know, people who are in very good shape, uh, they don't they don't drink a lot, is what I gather. I mean, you know, they're they drink, but. Uh, they're usually watching their diets and all that type of thing, but this was the end of a long uh, event and they uh, They drank and they got really drunk and we worked them into a frenzy So when 11 o'clock came around it was time for us to stop. They wouldn't let us stop I actually when I went over to the board the soundboard to turn it off. I have this this visual of like a half dozen six foot two you know triathletes blocking me from turning off the board and demanding that we keep on playing uh, so we played we played for another 45 minutes and then we said you know we, we have to stop and I remember starting to leave the stage and I was bear hugged by a few by one big fellow and he brought me back onto stage and demanded that we keep on playing and this just kept on going till I'm gonna say safely 1 a.m. in the morning we were actually held captive and you know and keep in mind there's there's really no law at this part of the island I mean there's a, a harbor patrol but he's out on a boat you know out there and at this time of night there's no one you know saying anything so anyway the last song we um, I'm playing and I, I remember turning to my guitarist and saying, I'm gonna make a run for it, so just cover. And in the middle of the song, I grabbed my steel drum, jumped off the stage and started running through the backside of the island, uh, which is kind of like, you know, a small wilderness. And as I was running with my steel drum over my head, I had to ditch it in a bush and run full speed because I had like a dozen guys following me, running after me. This went on for a while. I was able to hide out in a bush and they were looking all around for at least a half hour, very, very drunk, uh, trying to find me so that they could pick me up and put me back on stage where they had the rest of the band captive so that they could keep on dancing and partying. Uh, they never found me. I was uh, like hiding underneath the bush. I actually buried myself underneath this bush. I remember putting dirt over myself. I remember there was like a full moon it was there was light so I could see what was going on eventually they gave up but I was too afraid to go back to our campsite where the stage area was so I ended up spending the night on the back side of the island uh, just underneath a bush really I remember waking up in the morning and there were some buffalo next to me and I had never seen a buffalo that close uh, closely so it was that was kind of nice and so about 7 a.m. I wandered back into camp and they were waiting for me and they were very hungover and very apologetic. Uh, I, they apologized profusely for their behavior and I thought it was hilarious but they felt really bad that I had basically vanished. They thought I was dead like I maybe tried to swim out or something and uh, the rest of the band ended up sleeping um, on stage and sleeping bags and they said they played for another hour or so until you know people calmed down but that was it we always refer to that one gig as the Lord of the Flies gig because of that um, once again they were people were so apologetic they were throwing us money they made us breakfast the next day when it was time for us to all get on our, our uh, vessel to, to go back home uh, they wouldn't let, a, let us pick up any of our equipment they insisted that they did all the work I got apology letters for weeks afterwards from individuals and, and the whole time I just thought it was hilarious because that's what we do. We, we, we want people to have a good time. We want them to dance. We want them to party. Uh, but in that particular circumstance, they didn't want to take no for an answer and uh, they were able to kind of back it up and, and chase us down. So uh, the band's changed since then and I, I run into the old members in the band and, and we always rush to that one memory. We go, you remember that one gig?
Remember the Lord of the Flies gig where you were just running like an animal on the backside of the island? Um, that was uh, that's a good memory, but that is the most memorable gig uh, I've done. One of the most memorable. I've had a lot. I mean, there's other ones that come to mind too, like playing for the opening of a Staples Arena, playing, uh, you know, opening up for the Spice Girls. Uh, hanging out with Kobe Bryant at a private party with his wife. Uh, we had a lot of lot of fun, memorable events. As, as do most musicians in the in the SoCal area. If you if you work in SoCal, you end up you know rubbing elbows and that, the whole bit. So it's really not a big thing. But there are some memorable things. Anyway, that's it. That was my rambling. I hope this comes out well. And uh, we're on to tomorrow. Tomorrow is Monday. Uh, I'm not even sure what's happening tomorrow, so just tune on in. And this is a long one today. Peace out. We'll see you next time.